been, it's been good for me also to bring back the things that worked in Japan and in France into the system as well. So yeah, it's a, you know, it's obviously, you can imagine a guy like Johan Krubel was told to put some weight on. He's got some weight on, he's, you won't believe how much bigger he's got. A guy like Kanan Moody would have loved to have him on a, on a gym program as well, but you know, as it's turned out, he's, he's obviously doing well in the box setup. So, you know, and that's the other thing I think that I, can, that I can say is that having finished our one campaign, we've had four spring box being kept in the small space of time. So Alric played, Ruan Nokia played, Kirtley played, and obviously uh, Kanan played. So all of a sudden you get four more spring box into your setup, which was always a massive boost when you're going into those big games. Jake, um, I remember it was actually quite ironic uh, when Marcel came, he actually, um, and people asked about Michael Cohen, he actually said, wouldn't have been great, you know, to actually have both. You know? Yeah. I know there might be a few concessions with Marcel during the season and stuff, but yes. just how chuffed of you are, you know, I know it's a bit unfortunate for Michael, obviously, but he's found yes. a lot of so. Actually, it worked out quite well to you, just having that depth. Yeah, look, I mean, you did. I remember that. I said I'd love to have them both in one team. And, and as it stands now, I have got them both in one team. Um, I think the one thing that we also, we didn't want to lose Marku, because at that point in time, he was playing really well for the Bulls. And it wasn't so much that we just wanted two in the team, but wanted to make sure that we could, we don't really want to lose all the players that we've got. I mean, I think uh, the sort of uh, failure of some of the teams is there's a big change to the teams every year. I think it's super rugby. You imagine how many guys every year, new coach comes in, new franchise. Remember the old days used to sort of pick the Leopards coach one year, then the Pumas coach the next year, then the Bulls coach the third year, then the Leopards guy bring all his Leopards guys or the Puma guys. Now, you know, we're in a situation where, so to jump around a bit, we're in a situation where our squad is our squad. On Friday when we play, I can almost say the team that finished last year plays against the team that all new boys this year. And I know what I've got. So yeah, so to answer your question, fantastic that we got him back. Not only for us, I suppose for South African rugby as well. We've got to try and get that caliber of player back to play URC. Given the nature of his, of his, of his you know, entry, all those, you know, I know he's fine now. Yes. Um, is, it, is it a bit of a challenge for you to sort of like get some confidence back in this game now? Because I mean, any player would be wary now given his history. Yeah, look, I, mean, I must give you some feedback. Guys. So he hasn't played rugby for eight months. He has had absolutely no side effects, nothing, not even a headache during training in the eight months. Um, you know, I read an article this morning about Vakitawa now after 12 years in France being, being medically unfit to play in France. So, you know, as I said, sometimes it happens. Cornell Hendricks was in the same boat. He's played every week for us. So, you know, the, the challenge is, I, I'm not going to get into all the detail. He's got a certain amount of time that he has to get through and then the, then the insurance kicks in, um, like anything, you know. So, and I'm sure, you know, the risk is no different to anyone else. He can bang his head tomorrow in a friendly, you know, in the, on Friday's friendly, he, he could... He could do a morning session this afternoon and wake his head on someone's hip. So, yeah, but I think I can tell you from, from having been with him the last couple of days, he can't wait to play. I mean, he's in a, you know, eight months is a long time. I think he can't wait to get back on the field. How much do you like, what do you take from last season? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, there was a lot of things uh, for me that I enjoyed. I mean, we got a very young team and we obviously, we probably, you know, they. Yeah, we probably did better than most people thought we'd do, and I'm talking about as a team, as a squad. Um, the learnings were that, you know, we obviously fell short in the final, and that wasn't, it's always not nice to lose a final. Um, you know, I think the other thing that I think that the learning is just off the field. I think the one area where I think we can sharpen up is the travel. I think to fly around the world to get to Europe is, is not ideal. Fly economy class is not ideal either. I mean, one of the sales to the group of players uh, was that when we came from Super Rugby, business class to Sydney that you wouldn't be that far away from home that often you know as it turns out now I mean the schedule is what it is but we could go exit a one week come back play one week here go back to URC and if you're flying economy class um, and you and you try to fly via the whole world to get there I mean I know we've now got a an airline sponsor in Qatar so hopefully that will be addressed but I would say the one area that and the players are saying to travel economy class and as I said via 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 to get to London is not the way that, I'm sure it's not the way this tournament was sold and, and, ex, as, and the expectation from both players and fans and, and I'm su sure supporters will be the same. How much do you have yeah. 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 Yes, yes. Yes. Are you happy with these? Yeah. yeah, Mike, I mean, I, 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 of course. I mean, we're having gone to, to Ireland and beaten Leinster is, uh, you know, is obviously a massive I mean, you can't you can't put a price on that. I mean, people now believe that in our group that we're good enough to beat the best teams. Um, and I mean, Leinster are dominantly one of the best teams in Europe for a long period of time, you know? Um, so yes, the belief is there. 
as I said, I think we probably ex su superseded the expectation early on. I mean, I'm not taking it away. When you have a crack at playing a final, you've got to win it. Um, but this group of players, I mean, if you go through Aldrich Lowe and you go through Ruan and you go through Kirtley and you go through Canaan, I mean, the average group, or average age of our group is very young. And I think the expectation of our board and, and of people that are involved in our organization would be 23, 24 would be a, would be a fantastic time for this group to, to mature. You know, I'm just so excited to see we, we probably jumped ahead quicker than we should have. And now it's the second year. I'm quite keen to see if we can maintain that, that sort of momentum into the second year. Because let's be fair, guys. I mean, I just spoke to someone now. There's no ways Leinster are bringing a B team to South Africa again. There's no ways Ulster are going to be set up again in terms of, you know, expectations of the African sides. There's no ways the Irish teams are, you know, who are predominantly the best teams in this competition over the last couple of years are going to come with their, you know, with their eyes closed again. So, you know, I'm not taking any away. We're going to have to be better because I've got no doubt every team that now plays against South African franchises is going to want to do better as well. So, yeah, that's the challenge, I suppose, for all coaches to see how good we are in year two. I think I've asked Joe in the coaching team. Yeah, I mean, Joey is, uh, yeah, I mean, think people move on, you know. I don't know where he's coaching. I mean, I... I think they're, I'm not sure. Well, I don't know if he's coaching because, I mean, the juniors played this weekend, he wasn't there, and the uh, seniors played in Joburg and he wasn't there either. So, I don't know. I don't know where he is. Jake, uh, who is that? Actually, is that not dead? Can you see? Probably not, eh? Probably not. And uh, that is going to be a challenge, you know. Obviously, with my experience, Kubis have been in Europe. Um, you know, it's easy to say we play Curry Cup and Europe and URC, but, you know, that, that only happens when you've got people on the field, you know. If you look now, you've got a couple of teams already got some niggling injuries. I mean, they haven't even kicked off yet, you know. So, yeah, my, my, my concern, and I've said it many, many times, is that the Curry Cup becomes just an also-ran competition. It comes like the Voter Cup of, Voter Cup, Cup of Old, and that would be, and I, again, I echo what everyone says, we, that'll be a sad day for me, that the Curry Cup just becomes another competition where we're making up numbers and, and getting teams to play. You know, I think... Uh, but we can only cross that bridge. I've heard the Curry Cup might be in February. Then I heard it might be squeezed in at the end of URC because there's a, a massive gap between URC and the World Cup. So until we get those dates and until we get the exact program of who can play in which competitions, we can answer that question. Yes. But I would say to you again, and I stress it, it would be a sad day if the Curry Cup just becomes, uh, you know, last Curry Cup final, taking nothing away from anybody. I think it's the first Curry Cup final in the history of the Curry Cup where not one Springbok who ever played for South Africa was on the field in 46-man squad, and the ref wasn't an international referee. I don't think it's ever happened in 130 odd years that the Curry Cup's been around. And you know, we didn't, we mustn't take that lightly. Taking nothing away from Pumas and Griquas, and you know, all credit to them for winning. But geez, I can't remember the last time no Springbok was on the Curry Cup final field, even an ex Springbok, and it wasn't ref by an international referee. Jacob, sorry, just just um, one question. Yeah. We had a couple of nice signings, but I just wanted to be a as I was there um, mm. and Plali. Mm. Um, a guy like him, Plali, I'm obviously reading it in losses and, you know, it's basically two years ago, he didn't even know whether the inside of the gymnasium actually looked like. Yeah. You know, that's just not the time of facility. I can tell you, he, looks, he knows what he looks like now. Yeah, so. yeah no, that's what I, I've got yeah. to say. Because he says he came in at the yeah. pre state and just like, Put in the work that anyone, you know, no. right now he's basically penitent. With no, look, he's, he's, he's doing really well, really, really well. And Pumzi too. I mean, I don't think people know, but Pumzi was captain of Selborne College. You don't become captain of Selborne College unless you know how to play rugby. So, yeah, look, I, I think that one of the things I've also learned in the last couple of years, and I, I, I've learned over years, but I've also seen with the Bulls in the last couple of years, is you're as good as your weakest player. And if your depth of your squad gets better and better, I mean, all of a sudden your training sessions are more competitive. When you put them into certain teams, so Mossy now running with Marcel and Marku and Ruan Nokia and Kirtley Orensa and all of a sudden goes up four levels, you know. So same as with Pumzi, you know, you put Pumzi in there and you get him to, to do certain things in the line out uh, that he's doing now with Ruan and Gerard Steenkamp and Grubis, whatever. All of a sudden it looks like he's, you know, he's meant to be there. So, you know, that, that, is, that is the sort of work on that we've had off the field is to get the level of our squad more competitive, pick our weakest player, and I say that our number 45 or 50th player, to be a player we can rely on. I mean, you, you look at our squad, you've got Chris Smith, who's come from Free State as well now, um, and his name's Barton Smith. He told me he's not Chris Smith. Chris Smith's a fly-off who plays for the Bulls. So, but the reality is when you got him running against Cornell at centre and you've got that kind of calibre at practice, your whole training session gets better. So, and, and, and as I said to Kubis, you know, we play Europe, we play Leon, we play... 
who knows, maybe one week you'll have to go with a whole combination differently that gets on the airplane and goes to play a away game. And I mean, if you, let's start showing that they've got to do it over the years. So, you know, if the Bulls want to compete at that level, we've got to be good enough to do that as well. A question about you. Yes, yes, yes. Are you involved in the UOC? No, no. So he's got a, actually got quite an interesting project now is I've given him a job where he's going to look after the juniors. And I, I'm not saying that he's not involved with seniors. I'd like a report on all the juniors that he feels have got a future at the Bulls in terms of where they are. And then more importantly is what do we do to make sure that we put them on the right pathway? So, you know, you, I'll give you an example. We have a lock who didn't jump at school. It's a massive kid. Never jumped at school because no one could lift him up at school. And I mean, that happens. Now we want to sign him, but he can't jump. So now who's going to make sure that before we sign him, he gets taught to jump and, and be in a line out, you know? So, and then that means that Gert would have to work out that program. So Simon, for example, he might not physically go to the line out session, but in his program, he would be able to say to me, in the next two years, this under 19 boy needs X amount of line out sessions. And he will then collate that for me and get the coaches in. So if we get Russell to do it or we get you know, I'm just giving example, we get Victor Matfield to come and do a session with him. He will then put that together and make sure that when that garment graduates out of under 20s, we haven't wasted two years of pathway development for, for that player. And the other thing which he's going to do, spend a lot of time with the junior coaches, helping them with what happens in the seniors, making sure that we almost, almost replicate the training sessions, the drills. Uh, so, you know, I'll also be there. But having an ear close to the ground and having presence there is, is vital for me. Must be 